Welcome back to another episode of We Are Again, next to our little ragtag team of... Let's call them bandits. And uh, we are on our merry way towards this thing here, the Crocodilians. Let's see uh, how good they are, if I can actually defeat them. And uh, also, who else we find along the way? Ha! Call it like a dog. A very tall, very strange sailing dog. I'd pity you, but Jack Pearl and Ethelbel has a soft spot for beauty, and you carry that sugar off so very well. Huh, huh, huh. Tell the crab to watch its tone, or it'll find itself on the wrong end of a spear. Hmm. Uh, Skull, but you don't even like eating shellfish, so you certainly won't stand to be insulted by one. Uh, okay, now, what's a, what's a crab doing next to the ocean? That's a very stupid question, but all right. Laughing in the faces of my enemies, of course. Ask if there's any way out for joy. There's probably a lot of ways out here. But of course, they'll happily dump your mega bony corpse into the sea when they're through with you. Oh, the tragedy of it. Hmm. What exactly goes on inside the fort, though? Do you know? Sorcerers dance while magistrates pull the strings. Fools all! Their tomfoolery won't save them from the destruction the void shall wreak upon them. Hmm. How it came by its uh, source powers? Does this... Why does the crab have source powers to begin with? Like, how do we know? This power is my birthright, same as yours. But one of us has grown to astounding heights, and the other has sunk into depths too humiliating to describe. Pity. Hmm. Raise an eyebrow. Didn't the order bring you here to cure you? Ha! Of course, pretty. But which is worse, the cure of a disease? That is a very, very good statement. True, Boonbag. Bow before a scepter, the ineffable. Bow hmm. before it's too late. Um, do you know exactly what's going... Uh, okay, we got that one. Uh, how does it come to the source powers? We got that one right now. Didn't the order bring you here to give... Okay, good. So we basically are asked it all uh, the questions. And every time we do so, uh, the uh, one of those questions uh, or options disappears. It's not that you can... Uh, like, yeah, talk to them over and over and over with the uh, same dialogue choices. That's not going to happen. Anyway, uh, I wanted to go further north, so let's not go south there. Uh, also, let's uh, put a marking here with one. Oh. I found you, didn't I? Red, they said. Red, then dead. Oh, that one. Okay. Uh, is this going to be another attempt on your life? Because they're a frightful bull, frankly. Huh. Uh, so you've had quite enough of these shenanigans. Uh, who are they? And come on, out with it. Uh... Okay, uh, let's go for the first one. Not an attempt, mate. Not if I can bloody help it. Uh, right. Time's up, Your Highness. Let's dance. Aha. That kind of backfires. Right. Um, you know you're standing in a puddle of water, right? Um. I can pretty much kill you in an instant if I wanted to, so... Let's get some bleed out. And save beforehand. Real quick. Uh, can I? Yeah, I can save. So, let's see. Uh, what happens if I go for AoE, just in case? Does this fella get attacked? No. He's not part of the part of the fight, which is quite nice. The only problem is, if I go for this AoE thing, then uh, all of the others are getting poisoned, and this is definitely not a nice thing. So, let's end this guy's turn. Yeah, about that. Oh, wait, he's in water. That's actually not quite good. Uh, I could try some hammer stuff. Uh, and then I can just do some normal attacking that needs, like, three thingies. Let's go for fortification. Right. I should have just gone for, like other uh, thingies there. So what do we have? We got a fire thingy, we got some earth stuff. We go for earth instead. Let's just throw some. That's not working, but there's AOE that works. Look at that. He's not slowed. Oh, nice. Target's out of sight. Out of sight? What are you mental? What is this? Even? Like, I don't even know the A, uh, whatever that I need. Oh. Oh. Okay. Whatever. I'll yield to none. It does work. Look at that. Okay, that's kind of stupid. Uh, hmm. 
Doesn't this one have a radius? One meter explosion radius. Like this is two meters? 4.3. If I get this one. Nah, I can't do that. Uh, what if I... Target's out of sight. Okay, so I have to get really close to it in order to make that work. Now let's do this. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Another attack. Nice. We, we missed, obviously. So, now time for the big guy to... Really? Invisible? That's not good. Um... Oh, look at that. See that? See where our pointer can be and cannot be. That means that somewhere down here, there's a dude uh, that can be attacked. Let's see. Let's go this way. Because we know exactly where he is. So, let's attack the fella. That is a lot of damage. No. Let's see a little bit of that. Hmm. How long until the fellow is dead, though? I mean, come on. We need to do something against a physical shield. That gets a little annoying in the long run. Also, I need to move the team a little further away. Like, this is too... Too ridiculous. How much is that? Uh, damage is based on the physical armor of your shield. Oh, yada yada yada. I am fortified. That means that now the damage should be much higher. Right. What do we got here? Uh, let's go for free. Doesn't damage like that. And uh, a little bit of poison. Nice, nice, nice. And I can go with a little bit more bleed, of course. Nice, nice, nice as well. A bit more poison too. Oh, interesting. So this guy is poisoned because it's a positive effect. This guy is poisoned because it's a negative effect. Uh, and this fella is not poisoned because it's part of the team. That's very interesting that it differentiates it. Um, being blinded is not nice. But alright. Their frightful manners, I mind the most, really. Hmm. Oh, we can actually talk to him because now we have to figure out what's going on. Pretty interesting. So, let's go for ooh, an unidentified one. Need Lore Master one and an identifying glass to identify. Now, the question is does the thing uh, destroy itself or not? And why is it at the red? Well, okay. Ah, uh, the whole item management thing is so annoying. One of the most annoying things in these games, having to micromanage all of that stuff. Other than that, it's, it's okay. Mm, righty, let's, uh, okay, can I, can I, can I, uh, I mean, oh, I cannot talk to him. Now I can talk to him. Well, that was rather fun, wasn't it? I do find it ever so invigorating to cut a cutthroat's throat. <laughs> a cutthroat's throat. To cut some throat, in this case. Anyway, uh, say, he seems awfully relaxed for someone who was just the target of an assassination. Maybe it happens often. Oh, one gets used to this kind of thing so quickly. This is hardly the first time someone's filled some poor fool's purse and bid him kill the prince. Uh-huh. I'll tell you what, though. Whomever wants me out of the picture will have to do a lot better if they seek to get the better of me. Hmm. All those bumblers they've sent so far mark a mere insult to my swordsmanship. Yeah, not just your swordsmanship, but also our uh, mag magicness. Uh, anything else? Horrible surrounding for an agreeable conversation, but go ahead. Okay, uh, you're happy he survived the shipwreck. Uh, you were, um, yeah, of course. Uh, da -da 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 -da. How is it possible for Royal to end up in Fort Joy, though? There was though? a small incident which prompted my many rivals to move against me. Technically, they had the letter of the law on their side. Uh -huh. And how come the prince is at the end of the law, and in this case the wrong end? Such a nuisance, the law. Quite necessary to keep the common in line, of course, but one such as myself, it should exempt as a matter of course. 
Hmm, interesting. <laughs> uh, it kind of depends, really. Uh, someone has to make the laws, right? Yeah, this, this is actually a very interesting thing. Like, people make laws. Anyone, basically. Um, it could be, like, princes, uh, royals, right? Or, like, some special kind of people. It could also be the common folk. But in the end, it's, like, people, someone decides by the law that then is supposed to be kept uh, by uh, or followed uh, by everyone else which is quite weird hmm uh, too many laws keep people under the thumb of authority hmm disagree no one should be exempt from the law least of all those who claim they should be hmm it's very interesting like if you want to make laws then obviously you have to be like it's kind of deciding what goes in a box right only the one outside the box can decide what's going into the box and uh, if you're inside the box then you do not know what's outside and what could get in right that's just how that is remind him he didn't answer your question um did he did he now uh hmm too many laws keep people under the earth or, hmm it's it, it's not the authority itself uh it's the strictness really um it binds the people uh and makes them not as efficient as they should be and in this case an inefficient people uh is not good for the ones who want to lead the people just say mind him he didn't answer the question let's go for them Noticed that, did you? for future reference if i don't answer a question it's because i don't want to Oh, uh, is it? Uh, insist. Ask him what the incident was that made him run foul of the law in the first place. Uh, I wonder if it was a display of source that got him into trouble. Hmm. Now we want to know. Um, uh, but we could wonder. Maybe he does explain himself. I hardly know you as yet. Let's leave some mystery in the relationship, shall we? We can exchange criminal records later. Dude, you are going to carry all of my stolen goods. Like, you can be a bit more honest. Uh, you happy to survive the shipwreck? Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. How many assassins uh, he's had sent after already? Dozens, I should imagine. But if oh. we're talking about the ones that came after my exile, this would be number five. Hmm. The nice thing about all of those assassins is that you always get a bit more experience, right? It's very nice. Let them come, I say. Keeps one sharp. Yeah, and at one point dead. Say you're happy he survived the shipwreck you were in. Absolutely. As am I. A prince should die of old age or on the battlefield. Anything else could be construed as weakness of character. Is it? How's, how come a death on the battlefield is in any form, for any person, a good thing? If they're dead, they're dead. It's usually, yeah, it usually ends up uh, meaning that you lost a worker in the future, right? You don't want to lose workers. <laughs> you want to keep as many as you can. Uh, that's the thing that people don't seem to get. The only value that can be obtained is the value that people make and see in items, right? And the more people there are, the more value can be created. So you want to keep them alive as long as possible, and as many of them as possible, in order to create the highest amount of value possible. Simple as that. That said, I've the distinct feeling I wasn't meant to die today. For despite your heroics, I was still cast into the water. I sank. I drowned. Uh-huh. So you can't swim. But there was something in the water. A voice made of air that soothed my flooding lungs. Hmm. So do you also... Light, warmth, life. Hmm. Okay, I too heard some kind of voice as I was tossed in the water. Could it be the same one? Truly. How intriguing. To hear a voice whilst drowning is a rather specific delusion to share, is it not? Hmm. It's a very interesting one to share, but what if... It's just coincidence, um, because there's some strange idea that a lot of people have uh, different kind of visions, and some of them definitely coincide, and this could be one of those coincidences. Still, I wonder if... Hmm. And also, if it has the same trigger, 
then it probably also has the same outcome. He hesitates. Oh. Are you a religious person? Depends on the religion. A pity. Religious persons tend to be all too self-important in their supposed humility. Hmm. Too bad. So, in order to get the bestest of connections with this character, uh, you need to choose the right one. That kind of sucks. Uh, so, religious persons tend to be all too self-important in their supposed humility. Exactly. That's why I am. As for myself... I perform the ancient rites of prayer and ceremony with a kind of languid indulgence. Uh, meaning? After all, when one is revered by many as a living god oneself, public deprecation would be needlessly self-important as well, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Yeah, ask him uh, to tell you more about his need uh, to find a dreamer. Exactly, let's go for that there one. There isn't much to say, but for the fact that I simply must. Mm hmm because you can. It's the portent of it all. I can feel it. The revelation will be world changing. I just know it. Hmm. Tell him he's uh, got you all curious now. Yeah. And justified it is too. You will be a witness to wonders, I assure you. Let's hope so. As certain as the sun, such is my conviction. I will be, then grow beyond being. Yeah, beyond being, meaning you're gonna be an be dead. Tell him uh, you'd like to go your separate ways for now, at least. No, 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 we don't want that. I intend to rule an empire one day, not a tiny outcropping in the sea, lording over gulls and guppy fish. What do you have against guppy fish? To that end, I suggest we focus on the obvious: a farewell to Fort Joy and a hello to the mainland. Of course, I'd much appreciate it if we managed to find a dreamer first. Hmm. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Now, let's take our leave. So, yes. anything else? Is it an audience you desire? Uh, no. What about the other one? What about Faye? Is it not enough that you travel with me? Must you speak, too? Yeah. Go on, then. Bark away. Let's see if we can find any method in it. Hmm. Uh, it must seem very alien to Fane. Uh, ask what he thinks of your people. Oh, I think of them as little as possible. Mm hmm As much, I imagine, as you think of gadflies that buzz about you. Eh. Not that there is anything wrong with you, of course, just that you're, well, not all that impressive. Oh, well, because we are the same. You disagree. You have left the rest of your race behind. The undead enjoy the perpetuity of the bone. You will live forever. Well, living forever. But what if someone steals some bones of you? Dented are no better or worse than any other creature, although they cannot derive pleasure from food, drink, or flesh. No. Uh, it's hard to be kind towards undead. They've been puppets of evil necromancers more than once. Yeah, because they're puppets. But that, that doesn't change how you should feel towards another thing, whatever. As impeccably mundane as I have come to expect from this world, Hmm. Regardless, further study will be required. In fact, if, it's actually quite interesting. Like, if you do not get any pleasure out of food or, in this case, the flesh or whatever, then you can focus your attention towards other stuff. Maybe this is the reason why the undead are turning towards, like, mages or whatever. Kind of makes sense. Or at least they could also be, like, skillful individuals. Yeah. They have a different attention. The skeleton pulls a notebook from his robes and starts scribbling. After a moment, he pauses and looks back to you. Hmm. But wait a minute, I actually got another idea for that. If you do not focus on survival that much, then of course you can... Uh, or actually, if you do not think of survival as being that important, of course you can have something else that's more important. And you can focus on that. Hmm. So, even a normal human being, or whatever living form there is, uh, could definitely learn from the undead. Hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, do carry on. Just act as you do in your natural environment. Simply pretend I'm not here. Yeah, because he's not here, but he is here because he's still alive. Ask Fane well, what your next move... Nah, not yet. You're curious, his people, the Eternals, what they were, uh, were they like. This is perhaps the first intelligent question you have asked. After all, one should always try to learn from one's betters. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, that's what you were doing. Uh, My people are a race far beyond anything that exists in the world today. Uh huh. So they're beyond something, but where are they? We seek to master the secrets of the universe. I guess as much. We craft wonders to last through the ages, long after your crude tools have rusted to nothing. Hmm. Now, uh, where these wonders? Where are these wonders now? If they were built to last so long? I. I do not know. Hmm. But just because we can't see those wonders doesn't mean that they don't exist. Maybe they are so old that they are underground, right? Or maybe the wonders that exist are different. Not like a building of some sorts. Maybe they are more... Maybe they are more living than one may think. Like a tree that's created, right? Like, let's say you have the ability to change the genetics of something. Uh, and then you put this organism out in the wild. Then this is the creation that lasts for eternity. And it develops and continues living on. And no one will actually know that it was made. There are rumors that some have been found at the Black Pits. An oil field on Reaper's coast. Hmm. I was trying to uncover the truth when I was waylaid by these magisters. But wherever the artifacts of my people are... I will find them. We have not simply vanished into thin air. Hmm, but if they got burned, then uh, this is exactly what happened. Wonder what they looked like. Yes. There is a great variety among our people. Some are tall and lithe, others short and muscled. Some come in a variety of eye catching colors, others you can barely see at all. Interesting. So they do have flesh on their bones. This is what makes you such an abomination, you see. You look almost exactly like every other creature of your race. Doubly so, now that you're dead. Hmm. Interesting. So, is it the elven uh, thing that... Hmm. He is, or like, if, if some of them come in interesting colors and whatnot. Maybe there's some kind of shape-shifting form. Walking through this world is as repulsively bland as staring at a wall for a century. After a while, the very sight of you disgusts me. Hey. Uh, no offense, of course. Don't we look the same? Correct him. He keeps using the present tense when he should be using the past. Exactly. No. No, I should not. Oh, why? Not yet. Not until I know what truly befell my people. Ah. So he does not know, therefore he doesn't use the past. And after all, I am still here. Despite the Void Woken's best efforts. Hmm. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, ask Fane why he's so ignorant about the world. Yes. Ignorant? I dare say I have a better knowledge of this world than any creature living in it. Interesting. So. It's not ignorance, it's more deeper understanding and the profanity of it. Oh, I may be missing some social mores or be unaware of what king waged which war, but why nitpick? Hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like knowing what kind of ant is the queen of an anthill. It doesn't matter. It's just another queen. <laughs> Observe that he doesn't seem to be a fan of history. Well, you don't need to be a fan of history. History happened in the past, is it? Uh... Your history is an interminably dull list of mortals that were born, achieved nothing of worth, and then died. Hmm. That's a simple conclusion. Certainly one may have expanded his kingdom. Or another invented some way of pickling fish. But what does it matter? Where will your kingdoms be in 100 years? In 1,000? Yeah. Let's just uh, wait and see then. They will all be dust. Along with each and every one of your great heroes. Hmm. I point out that he's a scholar. Doesn't that make his job kind of pointless? Why? Your people and nations come and go. Mayflies screaming their importance at a universe that cannot listen. Hmm. But the universe is always there. The laws that govern your states change over centuries, but the laws of the world... Hmm. They... Do they change, though? That's actually a very interesting question. Even when my people walked this land, a dropped apple still fell to the ground. I have yet to see the mortal king that can decree all apples must fall up from their trees, or order fire to produce cold instead of heat. Hmm. Very interesting idea indeed. But if you talk about an apple or dropped apple, then that means that 
the apple was let go. And you kind of infer that it goes downwards because of the dropping. So of course a dropped apple falls down, because it's in its way, otherwise it would just be an apple. No, these laws stretch to infinity. Understanding them lets you understand the world. That is knowledge worth having. Everything else is arguing over who has built the prettiest sandcastle as the waves creep closer. Hmm. <sighs> Deep understanding. Like everybody should definitely play this and talk to Fane. Um so this mask he's looking for, what is it exactly? The mask of the shapeshifter. In hmm. my time it was nothing more than a novelty. A toy, really. Oh. I crafted one for my child once. She spent the day trying to convince me that she was her mother. Even though the face I used looked nothing like her. Of course, now that toy could be the difference between life and... Well, it makes a difference. Between life and uh, not so much life, With right? With that mask, I can shapeshift and walk through this world looking like any other simple mortal. I could look like a lizard, a dwarf, a human. Any creature whose face I can procure. It certainly makes traveling through towns easier. Yeah, uh, uh, thoughtful, I eat toy or not. It could be a powerful weapon, a powerful weapon, obviously, it's a useful thing. Um, how do we craft the shape-shifting mask exactly? Oh, it's quite simple. One just acquires a face, a source orb, and combines the two to make a face mask. Huh. So you just smash them together and it's... Combining several of these it? single face masks along with a source orb will produce a mask of the shapeshifter. Ah. Uh. So you can switch between one to the other. Frankly, I'm amazed everyone isn't doing it. Hmm, because everyone doesn't have faces. So, I mean, a face in that pocket. Wonder how he feels about having to hide his true face in fear. Fear? Please. Why would I fear these creatures? Yeah. Actually, it doesn't make sense. It's not really fear. It's more a term of inconvenience, is it? It's a practical choice. Nothing more. Exactly. Moving through this world is so much easier when you don't have to lecture some torch-wielding lunatics on the dangers of an open flame. Hmm. <laughs> uh, suggests that maybe there aren't that many spare faces lying around. Oh, of course there are. How many hundreds of thousands of mortals have died over the years? Yeah, but you have to keep those faces fresh, right? Almost all of them seem to have been disposed of while still wearing perfectly serviceable faces. It's a terrific waste. Still, without the proper tool to remove the face from a corpse, I cannot take advantage of the many cadavers you're providing. Hmm. Actually, every time we defeat an enemy, there's a probable, possible face that we can take. So if you happen across anything that seems capable of ripping a face off a body, please do let me know. Rip? No, we don't rip faces off. Why don't we just cut it? Wouldn't that be much easier? Not the rare toy or not. It could be a very powerful tool, obviously. <sighs> Trust you bloody-minded beasts to turn a child's trinket into a wicked purpose. Yeah, it's just the option that I had to choose. I mean... People like you are the reason it must be recovered. Hmm, because they don't see it's important. I'm using the mask to keep myself safe from the violence of this world. Who knows what evil it could do in the hands of some mortal witch. Hmm. No. Um, you'd like to go to... No, 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 no. Let's ask him what to do next. Actually, we are looking for well, the mask. Brief swim in the sea, lying in the sun for a while, and maybe read a nice book. Uh -huh. Or perhaps, and this is just a thought, we could find my mask and escape this wretched island. Sounds like a nice plan. Hmm. Right. Uh, and then there's also the beast uh, we can talk to. Uh, so let's do that. It's also already a very long episode, and I didn't even manage to get all the way up here to finish that mission. It's quite interesting. Come on, you stubborn hunk of garbage. The dwarf's fingers clamp around a splintered chunk of wood nailed to the skeleton of an old ship. His whole body strains with the effort of wrenching the plank free, to no avail. Why are you so keen on getting some wood off of a ship? Hmm. You recognize this fellow from the ship? Yes. Tell him you're glad to see he made it away from the wreck. Actually, yes. Eh? Yeah. Maybe his uh, memory is not as good as ours. Oh, that. That won't be my first or last roll on a lost boat. Mm -hmm. I reckon I might have had a harder time of it without your help, though. Bravery on the high seas is rewarded tenfold in the hall, you know. Yeah, in the hall of the 
did? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got business to attend to. The dwarf spits into each of his calloused palms and rubs them together before placing them both back on the plank and pulling. Yeah, maybe you need some kind of tool for it. Nah, it's just stuck. That's what happened. Uh, do we need a hand though? Go on then, give it a go. You grab the plank and pull. The rusted nail pops loose, and the plank promptly crumbles to pieces in your hand. Hmm. You probably pulled too much, or at least figured out that the plank wasn't good at all. Oh, look at that. Nice of you to finish the job after I uh, loosened her up. Yeah, you're welcome. He winks and flips a gold coin toward you. It makes a long, high arc glinting in the sun and lands squarely in your hand. Oh, how convenient. For your trouble. Thank you. Now, uh, hmm, tell him you doubt that the old plank was worth a coin. Actually, everything is worth whatever. In this case, it's not the plank, it's actually us helping him out. No, but I'd hope to build something with it that would be worth a thousand. Yeah, it would a fool's errand thinking I could make something out of this heap. But I couldn't help myself from trying. I mean, you found yourself some... already, uh, prepared kind of wood like you don't have to cut down a tree right so that could work he sucks a finger and holds it up to the wind testing the breeze winds like these she would have capsized before she reached the break well on to plan b uh plan b are you planning to escape he gives you a wry look as though deciding whether to trust you i was planning to build me a raft and paddle off I've got business north of here, in a town called Driftwood. Far be it from me to miss an appointment. Ah, tell him you hate to break it to him, but people don't just leave for joy. Actually, we are not here to uh, stop him on his journey. Um, if he's getting out, uh, we definitely want in. That's a good one. Why don't we make a deal then? You help me get out of this place, and I'll do the same for you. Ah, oh, sounds like fun. Uh, yeah, shake his hand. That's the spirit. He lifts an invisible cap and bows with the grace of a courtier. Oh. Pleased to make your acquaintance. The name's... Well, the name's dead and buried. What matters is what they call me. Beast. Hello, Beast. Um, how do you get that name? Uh, the story is well known, even outside the Dwarven Kingdom. He was outcast after trying to overthrow Queen Justinia, right? Ooh. May have been cast out, but you can bet your last heel a breed she wishes she hadn't of. I've taken my revenge a thousandfold on that tyrant's fleet. Uh huh. And why are you so keen on getting revenge? Why don't you just let it go? Uh, uh, it sounds like he has a case of sore grapes, exactly. A case? A whole orchard, more like. Justinia went absolutely cuckoo with power, and it's the people who are paying the price. Sounds familiar, does it? Ah, no sense getting riled up about it now. It's not about me, it's about... Ah, never mind. Anyhow, we're a team now, so the me is not half as important as the us. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to brass tacks. Fighting, I mean. Yeah, so I do have one melee character. I have uh, one range fella. <sighs> What's that beast gonna be? I've been up and down the realm so often it'd make your cabbage spin. And I picked up a few tricks along the way. Truth be told, I've grown fond of crushing and casting. A battle mage, if you like. But there's not so important as team dynamics. So what'll it be? I don't care about team dynamics. I want them to have fun uh, with the role that they choose for themselves. In this case, it will be the battle mage. Then it's settled. I'm just going to choose all of the skills that they have uh, and make them work together. So, not there, uh, that settles it. Capital. Well, that's that sorted. Onward then. I've got to get out of here, and soon. And I suppose you do too. Hmm. Tell him there's one last thing you should know. You're undead. Oh, I'll be going proposing the uh, undead to everyone now. Ah, well. My best mate's son is undead. Nothing to be ashamed of. Huh. Seems like everybody is. Yes? Now, onward. Righty. We got ourselves a beast. Not drawing many winning cards of late, but I won't be crying over it. 
Sailed away from my last island prison, scot free. No reason I can't do it again. Uh huh. Now, uh, what's your next move? Oh, wait. Note that he makes frequent glances at a parchment he carries. What's written on it? Good question. Uh, he has a parchment. Where is it? Beast, this thing. Uh, stolen letter. Characters. Bi right. You notice that, eh? Well, I'm a lot of things, but subtle ain't one of them. So, there's some things you ought to know about me. I'm sort of kind of royalty. I mean, I, I never wore a crown. Not with diamonds in it, anyway. I once stuck a wreath on my head and... Oh, sorry. I need to stop with that whole tangent thing. So, we got two royals and an eternal dude and uh, some custom fella. Great. Anywho, let's just get it out there. I'm a bastard. The literal kind. And the other kind. The, the royals weren't all great with me and I weren't too great with them. Mm-hmm. And, uh... To make an overlong story over short, I started the rebellion and got caught and exiled to an island prison. Like Fort Joy, but ten times worse. I would have died there too, if one of Justinia's ships hadn't sailed so close. So, I kind of took it, and off I went. <laughs> cool, right? Yeah, really cool. So, did you just do the rebellion because you want to get into the position of power or was it more or was it really something that Justinia did and then I came upon the victory nice ship the royal sailors walked the plank as well as you could hope for and that's where I found the notes right there in the open next to the manifest hmm so is he a pirate then well he just took some ships doesn't really make him a pirate but Definitely interesting connection. Uh, what did the notes say, by the way? Let's see how quick I can be. Queen Justinia has ordered some dwarf named Lohar to ambush a ship called the Peacemaker and take its cargo. Whatever's on it, she's using it against the rebels. She calls it Operation Downfall. Hmm. Pretty ominous, eh? Yeah. Question is, what's going to fall down? So, yeah. Hoping to find this Lohar fellow and stop the Operation Downfall thing. And there you have it. Tangent free. Mostly. Well, yeah. not mostly. A little. Uh, okay, not at all. Okay, and what will be our next move then? I'm no people person, but I've had a run-in or two with magisters before, and let me tell you, most of them couldn't pour water out of a boot. Uh-huh. One way or another, we'll slip past them. Just keep your head to the ground. You'll get more than an earful of dirt, I promise. I don't want to get some dead. Uh, tell him you'd like to go your separate... No, we don't. Let's take our leave and hope everything is fine. Beforehand, uh, we have to manage this fella. So we've got strength, we've got constitution, and a bit more intelligence. <sighs> Let me guess. Another geomancer. No! Oh, Aerotherge. Look at that. And warfare. So warfare is physical. Aerotherge is um, air damage, whatever that is. And what else we got? Persuasion, another one. Sneaking, very nice. So I don't, wait, what are my talents, by the way? Do not, yeah, no. I don't have sneaking, but I have fever. <laughs> right. Um, uh, pickpocketing. I actually have to figure out how to do that. Maximum of this stuff. Uh, gives you bonus to sneaking. Great, come back. If he's dead, that's quite useful. So he's beast, he's noble, a barbarian. Um, interesting. So we do have an awful lot of options to choose from if we want to interact with other fellas. Seemingly bottomless? No. Um, where is the fella? Fane based? Yes. Where's the letter? Stolen letter. Ah. Captain Arthas, Operation Downfall has commenced and Her Majesty's orders are clear. My men will make the move when the peacemaker nears Reaper's coast. Trust me, the Divine Order drunkards on board won't see it coming. Sail the victory on my signal when the bonfire burns and under cover of darkness. Do not bother disembarking. We will load the cargo and then return to Driftwood. You only need to transport it and be quick. Her Majesty does not tolerate delay. It is time to strike. The rebellion will fall. Huh. Interesting. There's just one problem. Um, like if you have some rebels on it, I click. Can I? Can I? I cannot identify. I don't have this uh, hourglass thing. 
Let's just hope this hourglass uh, can be used easily. Uh, not like that. What do we do with the gold, though? I mean, I can just take some gold over here and some, get some gold over here and do some auto sorting. And with a bit of luck, the gold gets a go the, the gold door gets uh, stashed all the way together. Faint beast, yeah. And some healing stuff. Definitely have to do something uh, to heal them. Like healing potion, poison potion, uh, healing potions, all of that stuff. Mm, to make it easier for them. Interesting. Oh, wait, there's more. So, you read through it all, which means you know what I'm up against. Uh, no, I don't. I just read some orders, and that is it. This Operation Downfall sounds serious. Uh, it just sounds like an operation. Nothing more. Not much more than the paper told you. But it's enough to know I've got to stop Justin here. She's got the rebellion in her sights. My comrades. My friends. Hmm. Um... Right. Now, what exactly happened with the rebellion? Listen up. The Queen was a good woman once, and I'm a bastard cousin, so I would know. Come rainy days, we'd sail paper boats and drop beetles on them for plank walking. She was never a beast, but her spirit roamed free. Uh -huh. Then Queen Laura died, and it was Justinia's turn. The Divine Order was growing, and the lizards were on the move. First, it was just flags. The royal insignia always flapping in my face, demanding my allegiance. Yeah, that kind of sucks, does it? Then it spread. You say a good word about Lucian, and you just disappear. Artists were cleared from the streets, replaced by royal goons in full armor. And the lizards would come, they said, and we should all be ready to take up arms if the queen demanded it. <laughs> this is so eerie. Just listen to this. It's absolutely amazing how current this sto story is, let's say. No way to live. Me and the others, we decided it was time for a change. Hmm. Shadows of the past cloud his bright eyes. He no longer looks at you, but through you. A storm is brewing, we can be sure of that. But I'm just as sure the sky will clear after. The gulls will come back to perch and the sun will dry our faces. That piece is all the more special when you've heard the thunder before it. Hmm. You don't need thunder for peace, but interesting. The rise of the dwarves has another part of it. Great. Not Anything else? Many winning cards of late, but I won't be crying over it. <sighs> Sailed away from my last island prison, scot free. No. Re well, it's complicated. Where to even begin? Ah. Uh, let's talk about your fellow rebels. Gavillas. Meaning they are large and uh, look like apes. Beast chuckles at confused pause that follows. You know, as in guerrilla warfare. Oh. You better take stock of that skeleton of yours. Because I think your funny bone's gone missing. Actually, that's a very strange name. I mean, it's usually called Guerrilla. Whatever. The second letter is a U, so it's guerrilla, whatever. But if you label it gorilla and know that gorilla are in jungle and uh, everything is just going apeshit crazy basically then it kind of makes sense uh the whole term gorilla kind of uh, weird right but in a way that's just like very chaotic good women good men still fighting the good fight too though most of them fled to the hinterlands the Wave Dancer's crew's probably gone to join him. No offense to you, but I miss them. Still, probably best I don't subject them to all, all this. Hmm. So you'd like to know what uh, he was rebelling against? Well, we do know, but um, let's just say that we want to know what Justine did. Power, plain and simple. Uh huh. But power itself doesn't need rebellion. It's just that. What is what it's used for or against? It's like this. Some people, when they get a taste of something delicious, they want more and more of it. it like like fried sea bass. Once you start, you can't stop slurping. 
Yeah, but that's interesting. Par itself, just getting more par and more par at one point. Don't you just question yourself what you do with all of that par? Justinia got a taste of that power the first time she threw a mouthy jester into the dungeon at the urging of her advisor, just because he pointed out her uh, rotundness. That's a word, right? Uh, whatever that means. That's where it started. And it still ain't finished. Hmm. She could have just laughed at it and everything was fine, but okay. Just says that he deserved it. Uh, obesity jokes. So, hagnade. Wait, wait. I think you're learning the wrong lessons here. Huh. Whatever. Um, how do you end up in Fort Joy, then? Aye, this is a good one. Now, close your eyes and let it wash over you. The beast of the sea is skippering his beloved ship, the Wave Dancer, heading to Reaper's Coast. His target's there, you see. A notorious criminal kingpin called Lohar. The sails are full and the crew's in right spirits. Barking shanties like a chorus of seals. Tell my mates I sailed the straits and soon will dock in the Echo's Hall. Ain't to last, though. Magister ships surround the wave dancer like sharks suckling their prey. The brave rebels are on the ropes until the legendary beast boards the Magister flagship and summons a cyclone the likes of which no man or woman has seen. Hoy. Rain and wind, void woken everywhere, and our hero beast, the valiant, selfless beast, surrenders himself to the Magisters so the wave dancer may escape amid the rising chaos. What bravery! What sacrifice! What stupidity! Ah, what bollocks. I ain't no hero. Besides, you know how the rest goes. Hell, you're helping to write it. The Magisters haul me off, and soon enough, I'm heading to Fort Joy. Collared, like the beast I am. Hmm. It sounds to you uh, like his crewmates are the real heroes. Are they? Nah. I mean, all of this stuff doesn't really sound like hero, whatever. To me, it's just some kind of encounter that backfired. Point out that he enjoys a bit of uh, embellishment. Can you trust him to be honest with you? Wait, what? Uh, look him in the eye. He's a hero. Make no mistake. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with number two. Good story's got tension. It's got action. And it's got a moral. My tails might be tall, but they're as true as the sun in the sky and the beard on my face. Hmm. So, how'd they get you? Yeah, it was a bad luck. Wrong place, wrong time, as always. Does it really matter you know, how exactly did we manage to get captured? Uh, say it happened the way it happened to everyone. They heard you were a sorcerer and hauled you off. That's quite uneventful. Uh... This time it's us, sorcerers, I mean. Next time it'll be them. You wait and see. Justice has a way of doing the old rounds. Yeah, but did the usual us versus them story always backfires? Why can't we just work together? As for me, he runs a hand slowly down the plaits of his beard, smiling sumptuously. I don't plan to spend a moment longer here than is strictly necessary. Hmm. Uh, what about this Loha fella you talked about beforehand? As far as I can tell, he's doing the Queen's dirty work. Meaning? Based on that letter, their plan was this. Lohar and his people sink a Magister ship, the Peacemaker. They transfer its cargo to the Victory, and then the Victory sails off to Duna knows where. No telling what the cargo is, but it means trouble. He winks. And not the good kind. Mm -hmm. And here I thought I was a talker. Yes. At least now we know more-ish. Ask a bitch what your next movie... We got that one already. Uh, I'm no people person, but one way or another we'll slip past them. Yeah. Just keep your head... Uh, let's take our leave. The episode itself was a very, very long one. And uh, Oh, by the way, what's this, um, what's this equipment all about? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, dual axes, 4 to 5, critical damage, physical, of course, some axes, whatnot. He's a warfare person, uh, but I do need to give him some armor. Armor, 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 armor. Um. Oh. Nah, same thing. Uh, scales with strength, scales with thing. What is this attribute? Strength. How convenient. So. Scales with intelligence, 
Uh, scarce with strength, but it's not as good as the other one is. Hmm, do we have anything that is... Ah, uh, that's good. Let's give him some pants. Uh, huh. We can only have one type of pants. Uh, doesn't seem to get that much. So he's more a damage dealer. And this fella here, the Red Prince, will be my, uh, my tank, mostly. Just have to figure out a way to heal him continuously. Then everything is fine. That's just one problem. Actually, I could be the tank, if I think about it. Strange tank. Some kind of, like, necromancer. Poison. Damage. Uh, redirecting tank that does all of the other stuff. It's kind of weird. Hmm. But as long as I can survive, everything is good. And as long as there's another undead that can also summon poison, I'm good as well. So... Do I really not have any kind of armor on me? Looks like it. Great. Whatever. Um, we didn't manage to get any further north, but at least we got a good, uh, good kind of story on these. So yeah, there's some air magic, there's a battering ram, there's some earth magic, there's some flurry, whatever this is, some kind of blinding squall. There's an awful lot of stuff that we could do with this fella. Um, but for now, uh, let's end this episode, which was more of the talky kind, and continue with the quest uh, and the crocodilians, and the next one, uh, the thing that he actually wanted to do. Until next time, then like and subscribe, and ta-ta!